Hello everyone, this is Shanu Bhatia from Gossip Fanta. Today I am going to make a video on the topic What is INIT.D ETC INIT.D Linux Service Management Package? Starting with what is INIT? Initialization is abbreviated as INIT in Unix and Unix based operating systems like Linux and others. INIT is the foremost operation that is initiated by kernel when the computer system boots. It is a daemon action that runs continuously till the system is shut down. Generally processes identifier 1 is allowed to INIT. It ignites the rest of the processes being the parent. Next is what is INIT.D. It is more relatively term for Linux operating system users. It is a directory containing a number of scripts for different services on your computer system. If we see the architecture, we shall find that under the etc directory there are several directories with the name where hash is an integer reflecting the particular initializations level in the range 0 to 6. Next is how to append init.d support in android. Essentially there are two ways to permit init.d in android. The first one is init.d support in the kernel or the native init.support making use of install recovery.sh file for enabling initd before moving ahead with the second method check the availability of the install recovery.sh file because most of the android users have this file that comes into operation when the system boots it is always advised to take the complete android backup prior to proceeding with any of the two methods requirements are a pc with linux or window operating system a rooted mobile phone basic knowledge regarding the usage of command prompt or terminal. Next is how to add init.d support in the kernel. Steps are firstly unpack the kernel and RAM disk in the sequential order. Then after the first step open init.rc with a text editor such as wordpad etc. Now after init.rc is opened add these codes at the end before the paragraph in which there is a stop booter name command is present code is you have to search for the paragraph with the stop button name command now save exit and repack ram disk and boot dot img next is how to add init.d support in the room first of all open system bin then system init then add the code after adding the code set permission of sys init to triple seven or triple five now at last make a directory at system and name it init.d last but not least conclusion in this video we started gaining knowledge with the introduction of init then we increased our knowledge with the introduction of init.d next we saw the difference between etc init and etc init.d then we explored an IIT for Android. As we know, Linux is an open source operating system, hence, other operating systems cannot be developed with some modifications in it. Same is the case with Android, as it is also Linux based open source operating system, hence, it also has in it process during the boot processes. Therefore, it became mandatory to discuss it in continuation. Further, we discussed about checking the availability in our device, and if it is not available at hand, then how to append in the kernel. The next session was dedicated to universal init.d and that was init.d toggler. I hope you like this video. If you like it, please like, subscribe and share my channel and don't forget to write your available comment in the comment box. Thank you.